Okay, so M1, January 2017, question number 6, part B. So we're on question 6, part B. Okay. Now, in, it's the same type of situation as part A. They've drawn a separate diagram, figure 4. And in, in this particular diagram, they said the particle, which was which went down to B, okay, was released from rest. There was only no other forces apart from just the weight acting on it and the friction. The particle is now returned to A and is held in equilibrium by a horizontal force H newtons, as shown in figure four. The line of action of force lies in the vertical plane containing the line of greater slope of plane through A. The particle is on the point of moving up the plane. Okay, now uh, we know that friction is still acting, it's the same plane, and the coefficient of friction was 0 0.3. Yeah, okay, so we know that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.3. So we can say mu is equal to 0 0.3. All right, now, a few things. Um, one of them is I don't like uh, the force looking in this particular direction. So I'm going to actually just redraw uh, the force, which is perfectly fine for you to do. And I'm going to draw it on this side. It's the same force. Okay. And I'm just going to redraw it on this side. So I'll put this as H newtons. And I will get rid of what's drawn for us. So I'll get rid of this on that side. Okay, that's what I'm just doing to make it just a bit less, you know, complicated, basically. All right. So that's what I've done. I've I've moved the force. I've just drawn it. Oops. I've just redrawn it on the other side. Okay. It's the same acting in the same direction, everything else is the same about it. Okay, so that's one force acting. Of course, we also have the weight of the particle. Okay, and we also have friction. Now, important. Okay, very important. It says, the particle is on the point of moving up the plane. The particle is on the point of moving up the plane. So it's, it's trying to move this way. It's not moving, it's in equilibrium. It's still in equilibrium because it says on the point of moving. So it's in equilibrium, so it's a statics question. It's not moving. However, we should realize if it's, if it's about to move up, what's stopping it from moving up? Well, there's two things. One of them is the weight, the other one is the friction. Okay, so on the point of moving up, it's just about to move up. That means the friction must be acting down the plane. So in this case, this is the way the friction is acting. Okay, and this is 4G, is it 4? What was the what was the weight of the particle? Um, 4 kilograms, yeah. So the the weight is 4G here. Where are we? Yeah. So the weight is 4G. Okay. And you have the component of the weight now acting parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so let me just make this into a dotted line, so it's just the component, this is the component of the weight acting perpendicular to the plane, and you've also got the component of the weight acting parallel to the plane, which is going to be in the same direction as the friction. So this is, remember this is your 30 degrees, so this is 4G sine 30, and this is 4G cosine 30. The important thing in this question is the friction is acting down because it's on the point of moving up the plane. If you said it's on the point of slipping down the plane, then you'd have the friction acting up. It's on the point of moving up the plane, so the friction must be opposing that. And uh, we also have to resolve this H newtons, okay, perpendicular and parallel to the plane as well. Okay, so this is going to have a component parallel to the plane acting up. Now, it's the same angle 30 here, right? This is 30. Okay, so we're going into the angle for this one, right? Now this is 30 degrees because this is like um, corresponding angle. So this is going to be h times because you're going into the angle cosine 30 degrees, and it's also going to have a component acting down the plane, um, per per uh, perpendicular to the plane. So we'll draw like this, and that's going to be h because you have to move out away from the angle given. This would be h times sine of 30. So now we have all the forces acting. We've got to find the value of h now, all right? So you have all the forces that are acting. Oops, what have I done? 
Okay, so let me just do this. <clears throat> we have all the forces now acting on the plane, uh, on this particle, on this plane. So now let's try to resolve these forces. Let's start with um, perpendicular to the plane. Now it's in, we can see that it's in equilibrium. It says on the point of moving means it's not moving. So perpendicular to the plane, we we'll see you've got, ah, what did I forget? I forgot something, which was the reaction force. Let me draw it as a solid line. It's not a component, it's the actual force itself. So that's the reaction, which is always perpendicular to the contact. So we can say R, now there's two things that it's equal to. It's equal to 4G cosine theta, so R is equal to 4G times cosine theta, plus, you've also got acting in that same direction, H sine theta, 30. H times sine 30. Okay, so that's resolving perpendicular to the plane. And I'm going to resolve taking up as positive, up the plane as positive. Why? Because it's wanting to move it's on the point of moving up the plane. So I'll say H cosine 30, okay, is equal to 4G sine 30. Those are the two forces acting, or the components of the forces acting, um, you know, parallel to the plane. You got this acting. You got the component of H up the plane and the component of 4G down the plane. Okay, and you've also got the friction as well, of course. Okay, so you got H cosine 30. That's an equilibrium now because it's not moving. So I can say equals. Okay, equals. So you've got these two forces acting down the plane, which is 4G sine 30, 4G sine 30, plus F. And this F is F max, because it's on the point of moving. So any more increase, it will move. So it's, it's reached this limiting value. And we know that F max is equal to mu R. Okay, now the F max now won't be the same as in part A, because R is different now. You see? Okay, the R is different now. So um, what we can do here is I can make an equation, basically, by replacing this with mu r. So h cosine 30, that's like root 3 over 2 times h, equals 4g sine 30. Sine 30 is a half, so that will be 2g, plus f max. Now f max, I'm going to replace it with this. So this is r equals, now 4g cosine 30 is 4 times, 4 times g times root 3 um, over t, 2, plus um, h over 2, which is 2g root 3 plus h over 2. Okay, that's what r is. And f max is mu r. And mu was, what is mu? 0 0.3. So mu is 0 0.3. So this is going to be um, f max is going to be um, 0 0.3 times this. Okay, so you're going to have that 0 0.3 is like 3 over 10. So you have, let me find some space to write this down. Doesn't want to go. So f max. Sorry. Let's move all this stuff down a bit. Okay, so we're going to say that F max is equal to mu r, which is 3 tenths, 0 0.3, multiplied by 2g root 3 plus h over 2. Okay, so you're going to have that will be 3. 3 over 5, root 3, so 3 over 5, g times root 3, okay, plus, plus, that will be 3 over 20 h. Okay, I'm just trying to do this in a way that I don't have decimals all over the place. And now, let's replace f max by that. So you've got 3 over 5 times g times root 3 
plus 3h over 20. So now we can find what h is. Yeah? So we can say root 3 over 2 times h minus 3 over 20 times h is equal to 2g plus 3 fifths times g times root 3. Now I can turn it all to the decimals if I want and continue. Okay? So let's just get the cal calculator out and start dealing with this. So I'm going to have root 3 over 2. So I have root 3 over 2. And I have minus 3 over 20. Um, that gives us 0 0.716. So 0 0.716H. So 0 0.716H equals, and now we're going to have um, 2G plus 3 fifths times root 3. So, so 2 times 9.8. So you have 2 times 9.8 plus. Three fifths times nine whoops times nine point eight uh, times root th times nine point eight times root three times root three. Okay, and you're gonna divide that by zero point seven one six. Okay, so you have so that's twenty nine point seven eight four, let me write that down. 29.784 so h is going to be 29.784 divided by 0 0.716 let me just make that a bit here 29 <coughs> okay so we'll take the answer divided by 0 0.716 And that gives us 41.59, 41.598, And as we know, we can round this to 3SF, 41.6 newtons. Or we can round it to 2SF as we use G in the calculation, which is 9.8, which is 2SF. So you can write 42 or you can write 41.6. Both of them are perfectly acceptable. I personally think it's better to stick with 3SF because some questions where G is not used, then you should write it to 3SF. And, uh, you know, this way you're just on the safe side, okay? Because then, you, you know, it will be acceptable in all cases 3SF, whereas 2SF won't be acceptable when you don't use G. So this is just being on the safe side. Okay, so there we have the answer to part B of question number six. Okay, and actually this is wrong. It's not October 2016. Okay, it's actually June 2000, January 2017. So just ignore that. Okay, thank you for what you for.